Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Facebook fam. Good morning, YouTube fam. Good morning, LOR Radio fam. Uh, blessings and peace be unto you. Shalom Aleichem. Praise the Lord. Amen. This morning's message is entire. It's communion morning. So come on, be happy. Are, are you happy yet? Are you in your joyful garb as yet? Uh, if you aren't, put it on, put it on, because it's time, it's time. So this morning's message is ASPC. Okay, you, you're saying, what does that mean? Now, we live in an era of acronyms. I don't know about you, Bishop, but I come across this a lot. Okay, city agencies, politicians, elected officials, it's all acronyms, right? Is acronyms you have dp boe you know you name it isn't that how it's like it's acronyms the teen teenagers use acronyms but they use theirs a little differently teenagers use them to code as codes to keep figures of authority out of their business right they don't want the adults to know what they're talking about so they use acronyms right the adults use them as a way of showing how much they know. The end result is the same though. Those who are unaware of what they mean are left wondering what the conversation is about. That's the bottom line. Now, as I said before, well, I said before, I've been in a lot of meetings. I have notepads filled with acronyms. I, I tend to, even though I'll use the acronym because we've heard it i'll explain what it is so today is no different i'm going to tell you the explanation but just 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 give me a moment let me first read in your hearing and remember we're blessed reading blessed hearing blessed applying the word of god now i'm going to read luke 4 verses 38 to 41. After leaving the synagogue that, that day, Jesus went to Simon's house, where he found Simon's mother-in-law very sick with a high fever. Please heal her, everyone begged. Standing at her bedside, he rebuked the fever and it left her. And she got up at once and prepared a meal for them. As the sun went down, that evening people throughout the village brought sick family members to jesus no matter what their diseases were the touch of his hand healed everyone many were possessed by demons and the demons came out at his command shouting you are the son of god but because they knew he was the messiah he rebuked them and refused to let them speak. We thank you for your word, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. God is amazing. Isn't God amazing? Is it a, I don't know about anybody, but just hearing the word of God being read makes a difference for me. Glory to God. This morning's message is entitled ASPC. I literally heard it that way in my head. Seriously. I was like, okay. And all it means is all sick people come. <laughs> to God be the glory. Jesus is about to do some things this morning. It's, it's a shaking and a moving day today. Come on. It, it, it seems as if sickness is plaguing the world, Bishop. I don't know about you, but including the church which is the bride of christ every time like if you turn on the news you hear all manner of things you don't have to turn on the news though just talk to somebody talk to your neighbor talk to the pastor next door talk to the pastor up the road talk just just talk to the people that you meet right it's like it's plaguing, almost. I, I, it's a guarantee 
that everyone knows someone within six degrees of separation that sickness is trying to overcome is very close six people is in a room they know somebody it could be even someone who's in the room but God so the thing is the solution I just read the answer to our problems praise God it is time for those that sickness is trying to play the thing is Bishop sickness is not of God the thing is sons and daughters of God sickness is not of God it is trying to overcome you it's a plague it's something that's trying to attack you hmm the Lord gave, showed me a revelation it's not, it's not time for that one yet but let me tell you something we as children of God we've got to be vigilant children of God we've got to stand on the word we've got to stay hemmed up stay prayed up stay praised up stay believing God these are some times we're living in sons and daughters of God you know I received a, 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 a picture of a mural that was done in uh, Mer uh, Michigan where it's a mural that they said the children painted middle school and inside that mural were the hand with the high and little demons and goblins and, and all manner of things hmm. do you know recently right here in New York I was driving I passed some school and on the wall was murals and when I tell you everything Thing that was demonic was on that wall every demonic symbol was on that wall oh it was beautifully decorated but you best believe it was there parents wake up grandparents wake up and God will hold you accountable it's in the Word of God so when you say, I don't have time, I don't have time to read the Bible with my kids, I don't have time to make sure they read no, 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 don't make sure they read it, read it with them. Even if they have their own time with the Word of God, you've got to spend time with your kids in the Word. Oh, so I'm not a pastor, I'm not a minister. You don't have to be, the Holy Spirit will unveil, He will reveal, He will expound. And if you're not confident, then find a church. Find a pastor, find a minister, find someone to explain it to you and your children. Join a Bible study group, but there is no excuse. The Bible says we're without excuse. Do you realize that God didn't give parents to children? You know what I'm saying, that children weren't born big and then given parents parents we become adults and then we're given children to rear to raise to train up in Christ because if we don't the enemy of our souls goes after them you think he doesn't know <laughs> oh, see what's happening do you see the books that are now in school by the way you can go online and check out the books that are in your children's schools better yet go to the school and find out oh I, I'm too busy I'm working towards three jobs oh really and who are you working for who are you slaving away for we make it all kinds of excuses but we have to make time we have to prioritize we don't have time for God we can't spend time with God the one who gives us breath the one who gives us life the one who sustains us oh okay all right it's wake up morning it's communion morning it was a part of the message but it is now because if Jesus says speak it I have to in Jesus's name amen all right so as I said before 
the body of Christ, the world is plagued with sickness. But you know something, when I read the word of God, whether it was in the Old Testament or the New Testament, the bride of Christ, has, God maintains the bride of Christ to be healthy. So what's happening today? Apostle took a picture of a church that was the pop-up site for a haunted house. It was a haunted house. And so, is it any wonder why the bride of Christ is not spotless, is not clean, is not pure, is not shining? Her garb has dust and dirt and smudge on it. But oh Jesus, he will clean up his bride. All right now, come on, amen. All right, bless, bless the Lord. So it is time for all those who have an issue that illness is trying to overcome. Listen, come to Jesus. It's a come to Jesus moment. Come to Jesus. You see, we have to acknowledge Christ for who he is. We can talk about Jesus, you know, we can talk about faith. But really, when we have that come to Jesus moment and we're like, Jesus, this is who you are. That's what I'm talking about. He is the one with all power and all authority. I don't know about you this morning, but all my soul is rejoicing. Come on. Have you ever been in a situation? I'm talking about in a situation in the natural where you may have needed someone in authority to help you. You may have needed, maybe it was your child in school, or, or you needed, you, oh, you know it, that when you select the schools, and then your child has to go to school, and then you realize, wait a minute, nah, 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 this school isn't the right school. I need my child to go to a different school. And they're saying, oh, no, you have to be authorized. You need somebody in authority to give you that authorization. Now, when you found the right person, how did you feel if it has happened to you? Oh, or you need a lawyer uh, to plead your case. Well, Jesus is the first lawyer. Plead my cause, O oh Lord, the apostle, the, uh, David, the prophet and king said. Oh, hallelujah. So anyway, when you need someone in authority, you have an issue at the bank. You need to speak to the bank manager or you need someone in authority. Whenever you get that person. All of a sudden, how you feel? The stress, you just, you literally can feel the stress just once that person says to you, listen, I will take care of it. You you, you start to de-stress. Your body is going into decompression. You're just like, oh, oh, finally, the one. What, well, how about Christ? The one who has all power and all authority. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, Jesus. Come on. Hey, hey. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you remember the, the man with the unclean spirits that was in the synagogue? <laughs> Ooh. You know, Bishop, as I was reading that scripture, it's in Luke, by the way, in Luke 4. But as I was reading it, you know what I realized? That you can be in church and have unclean spirits in you. Sickness is an unclean spirit, son and daughters of God, sons and daughters of God. It is. You think about the illnesses that have become plagues in this day and age. I was just speaking to someone and they were telling me that they succumbed to COVID. I was like, oh wait, COVID is still around. <laughs> Did you hear about all those children? The, the, right here in New York, it says the hospitals are overwhelmed with children. I've been praying for them that they have the RSV, um, the respiratory virus, that, 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 that virus that affects their respiratory system, their lungs, their breathing. These are the things that are happening. And so... In the church, 
There are people in the church, Bishop, that are dabbling with Ouija boards, with tarot cards, with psychics. And lest we say, oh, you know, my hands are clean. I don't touch that. What about the stinking thinking? When you're thinking evil against your brother or sister in Christ, in church. Even some people are thinking, stinking, thinking with family members, with their own brothers and sisters, with their own children. Oh, I've heard some people say some things. I was like, whew. Children thinking evil thoughts against their parents. If our minds are not heavenwards, if our mind, if we are not thinking on on the whatever things are lovely Jesus whatever things are pure Jesus whatever things are holy Jesus if we're not thinking if our minds aren't focused on Christ we're in trouble so some folks watch certain movies entertaining spirits unclean spirits will come to you while you're sitting in church and that's why we can sit in church and we're on the phone pastors preaching and we're on facebook we're on tiktok we're on youtube we're on whatever platform there is we're on twitter and we're showing our friends we're even showing our parents and our parents are like, and we're laughing We're in some perilous times. We're sitting in church and we're like, Pastor just got up to preach. And we pick up the, wait, he's not finished yet? Wait, he didn't even say hello. There were no salutations as yet. So why bother to go? I just think that we do a, okay. The Bible said we must not forsake gathering together. Let me tell you something, though. <laughs> um, we need some true conviction and conversion going on. We've got to know God privately, sons and daughters of God. We've got to spend time with God privately. Or else the public gathering means nothing. So, so when Jesus saw the demonic spirit, the demonic spirit recognized him. <laughs> Are the demonic spirits in church recognizing you? That recognizing the Jesus in you? Are they just saying? <laughs> When they see you coming, do they see Jesus coming? When you've reached to the church, do they decide, oh no, they got to get out of this church. We have to, it's time. So after Jesus rebuked the spirit and ordered it to get, a, get out, Here's what the people in the synagogue said, and I'm going to read Luke 4 and 36. And they were all amazed and said to one another, here's what they said. Now catch this. What is this word? The Davar Torah. What is this word? Listen, sometimes I feel like the King James Version or some versions really let us down uh, there are other versions that are helping us to see truth the people in the synagogue said what is this word you know jesus is the word right the bible said in john in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word became flesh who became who was that jesus the people said, I, I said, I said, Lord, look at you. 
Listen, sometimes we have to try to get back to the Hebrew or something. We, we, you know, I find a version that will transliterate the scripture. Because the people said, what is this word, the Devat Torah? That's what they said. They were calling Jesus the word of God. And even then, do you see what I, the demons recognized Jesus for who he was? Yet the scholars in the synagogue did not recognize him for who he was. It's communion morning. And it's time we come and lay. We got to get into the throne room of God. At the feet of Jesus. Cast all the cares upon him. Cast the sickness that is trying to plague you upon him in the name of Jesus. So they said. For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirit and they came out. That tells us that they knew that Jesus was the word. <laughs> Come on. Do you know that Jesus is the word today? A lot of us have Bibles at home and we refuse to pick it up and read it. You're not spending time with Jesus. And then we say we know Jesus. We don't know Jesus if we're not spending time with Jesus. And if we're not meditating on the word, this is how we get to know him. You know, because we can spend time in the... Have you ever spent time with people, but you didn't know a thing about them? If somebody came up to you and said, outside of knowing their name, you know nothing about them. You don't know what they like. You don't know what they like to eat. You don't know where they where they like to spend their free time. You know nothing. But you say, I know the person. You don't know the person. You're familiar, you're familiar with their name. You've spent time in their presence. We can do that with the word as well. We can do that. Oh, we come, we read the Bible. And we say, oh man, there was a good story in the Bible. And what did we glean from it? Did we see Jesus when we read it? You know, I, I, I told you guys that I had the, the situation with the pinched nerve. And, you know, I asked the Lord. First, I asked him what it was. I got what that was. Okay. And it was so. Yeah, it, it, it was so. Yeah. Um, medically, it was so. Hear this, though. I said, okay, Lord. Give me a word for my healing. <laughs> Can I tell you? The word said nothing about him healing me. Nothing. It said absolutely. Can I tell you? Absolutely nothing. However, when I read the word and I meditated on it, I tell you, I didn't even finish meditating on the word. Pain was totally and completely gone. I'm not trying to make this up because I, I will not lie on God. God doesn't need me to big him up. He's God. With or without us acknowledging, he's still God. I said, God. That's why we must not underestimate God. All we need to do is spend time with him. All we need to do is spend time with Jesus. Meditate and we get to know him. We see a different set of him. We see his loving kindness we see his heart of compassion oh my goodness hallelujah anyway let me continue so they recognize them do you now they said he has given us no they didn't say that the thing is jesus today today when he he he, he went to the cross of calvary this is why we have communion. He went to the cross of Calvary. He took your sickness and my sickness, your pain, my pain, your shame, my shame. He took them at the cross of Calvary. And in return, how does the song say? Your life for mine. Jesus gave his life for you. He gave his life for me.
in exchange for us to live and live healthy and be wise and be productive and be wealthy. He became poverty. He became sickness. He became shame. He did not sin. We did because of our progenitor's sin. He never sinned, but he took, he paid the price for our sin, our iniquities, and took our sickness pains the bible tells us he bore our sicknesses and our pains in the hebrew that's what it says he bore our sicknesses and our pains thank you jesus hallelujah glory so he died he was buried and he rose again and he gave us the authority. He has given us the authority and power to rebuke sickness and disease. Jesus rebuked. You see what he did? He rebuked the fever. You've got to rebuke. And sometimes you say, you know what? I rebuke that pain. The pain is still there. I rebu and, and so, No, no, no. Keep rebuking. Because when the faith builds up in you and that pain recognizes, whoa. Who just spoke? That was the voice of Jesus that just spoke? It's gone. It is gone. You know, <laughs> I thank God that he does give us testimonies. Hush. Well, he allows us to have testimonies. I had to go to Staten Island the other day. And so I got in the car and I'm driving and I realized I had a pain in my, in my wrist. I was like, at first, I didn't even think about anything. And so I, I, I'm, I'm driving. I had to make some stops in Brooklyn. So I went to the, to the Home Depot, the Lowe's. So while I'm walking in there, I'm still feeling this pain. It was then that I, I was like, I went in the bathroom. I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Get out. I said, pay, I rebuke you, get out. Okay. I walked to the car. I was still feeling the pain. No joke. I was still feeling the pain. I got in the car. I turned it on. I put my hand on the steering wheel. I was driving out. I was like, I did not open my mouth though. Seriously, I was like, wait. You still, you're still around? in my head no joke and i was about ready to open my mouth to say uh-uh you need to go when my daughter said to me because i had looked down she said the light changed she was with me and so i looked up and drove and by the time i got on the ramp it was no longer there I say that to say we have to, though, be persistent. Because, you know, have you ever had a, a stubborn dog or a stubborn animal or a stubborn child? You tell the child, do something, move, get up, and they're still sitting. And you, you know, or you say, get dressed, we're going to church. And they're sitting watching television or they're doing something or they're playing with their game or they're drawing or they're whatever. Or come to dinner, go wash your hands or something. And your child is still in that same position. What happens? Tell me what, what do you do? What do you do, Bishop? What do you do? You, you, you're patient you're patient but if you are speaking to your child and they don't obey you go in front of them and you say listen to me i told you get up and do your homework or get up and and go make your bed or get up and go wash your hands or get up and that child when they're here when they hear that sternness in your voice what do they do they get up they get up. The point is, sometimes, let's face it, when, when things happen to us, I, I tell you, you know, 
that first inst we shaky aren't we we don't like hearing bad news or we don't like feeling pain so when the pain first comes sometimes we don't even want to talk but we've got to open our mouth and say uh-uh wait where would you come from no you need to go back to where you come no don't entertain it you know i remember my mom used to say her boyfriends you know she's like she has these boyfriends quote unquote there were pain pain in her knee pain here let me tell you something when that pain one day hit her when she was coming up the stairs she stopped i say you need to stop calling it your boyfriend she stopped though and we had to go praying and 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 and, 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 and that was when i the, i asked the lord and the lord told me to do the hot and cold put hot water and then put cold water glory to god which helps we have to ask the lord for a word of knowledge sons and daughters of god and we have to rebuke the sickness and we have to rebuke the pain in the mighty matchless name of jesus you see the thing is luke 10 and 19 says here jesus says he says hey me i have given to you the power of god but in the hebrew it says that the power of god and the authority or the power of attorney to walk on snakes and scorpions and on all power of the enemy and nothing by any means can injure you this is this is what Jesus says. I, listen, listen, listen. ASPC. When we come though, we're coming in the power and the authority of Christ. This is the difference. We're not coming weak and we're not coming puny. Let me tell you something. When a sickness is trying to get on you, you know, the enemy has ways of doing things. And the Lord speaks to you and the Lord said, you know what? You need to get more rest. Or you know what? You need to stretch. Or you know what? You need to start exercising. Or you need to drink more water. God never leaves his children unawares. He knows the plot and plans of the enemy. The Bible tells us he'll bring it to naught. And so when he comes with an instruction, that's the bringing it to naught. But many times we do not listen. Many times we speak the sickness and diseases upon ourselves. And now we have to come to Jesus. He has given us all power. And he has given us his power and his authority to rebuke. Jesus rebuked the sickness. Do you know that when, if, if you read in the Hebrew, it further tells you that, you know where Jesus took his reference from? when the, the plagues came upon them do you know that in the old testament it says the fever was not of god it wasn't it wasn't this is it's in i think it's in deuteronomy yeah we've got to rebuke it the plagues came upon the egyptians it did not come upon the children of god read the bible again study it spend some time in the word of god so also he is the one that puts whose it is from his hands the nail nail pierced hands from which healing flows when the bible said lay your hands you go, today you're going to lay your hand upon yourself you're going to lay your hands upon your sick loved ones the ones that uh, no your, your loved ones aren't sick the ones that sickness is trying to overcome you're going to lay hands amen in Jesus name so let me read Luke 13 10 through 17 now he and we know he is Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath and behold there was a woman who had a disabling spirit for 18 years some of you may have had some issue for a few years well 
Well, it's time for it to get up and go. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, all tears are wiped away. Glory to God. Hey, hallelujah, Jesus. So, she was bent over and could not fully straighten up herself. <laughs> when Jesus saw her, he called her over and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your disability. And he laid. What he did? He laid his hand. You go lay your hand on your head today. You go lay your hand on whatever body part. Or your child or your husband or your daughter or your wife or your husband. Your sister, your brother, the neighbor, the co-worker. Whoever needs it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he laid his hands on her. You know, today... You have doctors telling people, if you you may have had an illness or something trying to overwhelm you or overcome you, it may be in you for five years and the doctor's saying, you know what, you have to live with that for the rest of your life. Lie from the pit of hell. Look at what the word of God said. Look at the people who Jesus has healed. Look at the people. 38 years, the man was a 38 years. Come on now, we've got to, word of God. Hmm. Hey, wake up. It's wake up time. Ooh, I feel like jumping. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Anyway, and he laid hands on her. And immediately she was what? Straight. Now, what did he do first? He freed her. Free your loved one from the illness that is trying to uh, come upon it. Free yourself. Rebuke it. And say, you know what? I'm free. Bless Jesus. Then lay hands. Oh, shake haraba. Hallelujah. And if something is wrong in the entire body, just lay your hands on the head of the person or yourself in the name of Jesus. And glory to God. And so, hallelujah. But the ruler of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, <laughs> said to the people, Now, you, you, you know, the ruler did not know Jesus. He had some unclean spirits in him. And one of the unclean spirit was the the indignant spirit. That was an unclean spirit. So here's the, there are six days in which thou ought work to be done. Come on those days and be healed. Now he's telling the people this. How ridiculous is that? Listen, when when sickness is trying to come up on a person you're not trying to wait the next day. No, nobody's trying to wait the next day. Uh-uh. What do you mean? He said there are six days. So wait. So they had to wait. <laughs> no. Thank God for Jesus. When you come to Jesus, that come to Jesus moment, there is no waiting. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on those days and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord said unto him, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And he said these things. All his adversaries were put to shame. It's time to put your adversaries to shame, sons and daughters of God. And all the people rejoiced at the glorious things that were done by him. Are we seated in Christ or not? Are we walking in his footsteps or not? So, Jesus laid his hand on the woman who was crippled with, by infirmity and he loosed her. In Peter's home at sunset, when the people brought those who were sick that was trying to uh, that sickness was trying to destroy. In the Hebrew, here's what it said. And he, Jesus, laying his hand upon each one of them was giving refua. He was giving healing 
to them. So he laid, we see where he rebuked and he laid hands. It's communion time. It's laying on of hands time this morning. It's time to lay hands on yourself or your loved ones. Just lay your hands. And let the authority and power of healing that comes from Jesus flow through your hands this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what you're going to do. Bless the Lord. When I take communion, I'm co-unioning with Christ. It's I in him and he in me. When you take communion, you are co-unioning with him. It's you in him and he in you. And please do not say, not proper syntax, not proper grammar. It is what I've heard and therefore I speak. May not be a word. But it is now in Jesus name. Amen. We're co-unioning with Christ. Hallelujah. Let me ask you a very poignant and pertinent question. Is Jesus sick? Bishop, is Jesus sick? Absolutely not. Is he healthy? One more than hundred percent, that thousand percent, a gazette, infinitely. Yes, hallelujah. Let me read to you John, first John 4 and 17. It says, By living in God, love has brought to us its full expression in us, so that we may fearlessly face the day of judgment because all. What is that word? All. Todo. All. Hallelujah. All that Jesus is, so are we in this world. You must believe that Jesus is healthy, sons and daughters of God. You have to believe that emphatically, that as Jesus, and say this, Jesus, as you are healthy, so am I in this world. Ah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. As your mind is sound, so is mine in this world. Ooh, come on. Whatever the sickness or disease that is trying to overcome you, Jesus, as you are without that, as you are without whatever it is, so am I in this world. You've got to say it. You've got to believe it. And when it still tries to say it, <laughs> You, you said it, but <laughs> it's still lingering. Say so back up and back off. You can never stand in the presence of my Jesus. What? You've got to stand firm. You've got to stand bold. So then lay your hands on yourself in all the power and the authority given to us by Jesus, we command sickness to flee today in the name of Jesus. I stand in agreement. I stand in the authority of Christ for the people of God in the name of Jesus. And I welcome instead the health sicknesses. You must flee. Ah, oh, you've got to go oh, in the name of Jesus. And now we welcome the health of Jesus. Let the health of Jesus, the same health that is in Jesus, now be in me, now be in you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is how we're doing it. Now lay hands on your head and command anxiety, depression, distress, huh? stinking thinking, panic anxiety attacks, doubt and fear to get out and to be cast into the abyss from whence it came in the name of Jesus. And now we have the mind of Christ. Say, I have the mind of Christ. Let the mind that it is in Christ now be in me. Ah, and Jesus is mine. His mind is full of love, his heart. Ah, 
Let it be in my mind and my heart. In Jesus' name, that's what you say. Now, you may or may not be near your wallet or your, your, your you have pockets in your pants or whatever it is. Lay hands on your pocket or your wallet or your, your, your bank card. And rebuke the poverty. Rebuke the lack in the name of Jesus. You say, poverty, you must flee in the name of Jesus. Lack, you must go. For my God supplies all oh, that I need and want according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah, glory to God. And now welcome the wealth of Jesus. For he so aptly, so wonderfully provides for us. There's no lack in heaven, you know. There's no poverty there. Hallelujah, glory to God. So now it's time for us to partake of the bread of life. I hope you have everything ready. I'm going to read a scripture. You can get it ready before I turn it over. The bread of life, bread of life. It's time. The cup of blessing, the blood of Jesus, the body of Christ. So if you didn't get it as yet, it's time to go get it. And as I said, it's not time now to say, I've got to wait till I get to church. You're a child of God. It is Jesus who makes us worthy. Jesus and Jesus alone. No man can make us worthy. You can't make yourself worthy. So come on. If you don't have it, get some water. Get a piece of bread. Even if you have that, as long as you're envisioning the body of Christ, and the blood of, blood of Jesus. The Bible says as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of Christ and what he did at the cross of Calvary for you. So I'm going to read to you John 6 and 35, then John 6 and 51, and then John 6, 53 through 58. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Come every day to me and you will never be hungry. Believe me in me and you will never be thirsty. Do you know in the Hebrew, I read to you when Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. But the Bible tells us in the Hebrew, it says, at once having got up, she was functioning as their minister. Did you hear I said, God, I've never read that before. The, the Holy Spirit was leading me. I'm tell, I, I was having a grand time. Listen, let me tell you something. I, you know, <laughs> because the Halloween and the, 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 the All Saints Day and the Day of the Souls, whatever, all those foolishness that was going on. Let me tell you something. This daughter of God. I spent time in the word of God. I was I was like, you know what, daddy? Mm -mm, you got it. All that is yours to deal with. I'm just going to rest in you. <laughs> I said, when I discovered this, I said, my Lord. I, I just used to hear that. Oh, I, I, I'm not just here. I've read it for myself. Yes, that he healed Peter. She got up and she, she, she fed them or something. No, no, no. In the Hebrew, it said the lady got up and she became a Kali Kodesh. She she became that lay minister and ministered. Oh, I said, hallelujah. Ooh. Let me tell you. Eat the bread of the, the, the body of Christ, the bread of life, because Jesus is the bread of life he says come did you notice what he said come every day to me mm -hmm. word of god word of god word of god and you will never be hungry believe in me now catch this he said believe in me and you'll never be thirsty do you see what i'm saying who christ is who god is now you would think he would say drink some water and you won't be thirsty he said believe he didn't even say read the word he said believe so how is it for us not to be thirsty we need to believe when we believe god now do you see what happened to the woman at the well she believed god 
and she was no longer thirsty. Come on now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, all right. Let me just finish and turn it over to Bishop because I've got to go. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. I alone, is verse 51, am this living bread. Only Jesus is the living bread. Oh, we can, oh my God. Come on. I alone am this living bread that has come to you from heaven. Eat this bread and you will live forever. The living bread I give you is my body, which I offer as a living sacrifice so that all may live. Glory to God. And now I close with this part. Jesus replied to them, listen to this eternal truth. Listen. Unless you eat the body of the son of man and drink his blood. What happens? You will not have eternal life. Eternal life comes to the one who eats my body and drinks my blood. And I will raise him up in that last day. For my blood body is real food for your spirit. And my blood is real drink. The one who eats my body and drinks my blood lives in me, in, in me, in me, in me, in me, in the word, in, in Jesus. And I, in it. I am in him and he's in me. The father of life sent me and he is my life. In the same way, the one who feeds upon me, I will become his life. I am not like the bread your ancestors ate and later died. I am the living bread that comes from heaven. Eat this bread and live forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God and amen. It's communion time. Amen. Sorry, did you did you say Revelation seven? Revelation okay. So Revelation um, seven, sixteen and seventeen says, "They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sunlight on them nor any heat, for the lamb." which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Your tears are being wiped this morning. You're being fed with the body of Christ and the blood of Jesus and your healing has come in Jesus name. Lay your hands once you've taken communion in Jesus name. Thank you. 
Now eat the eat the body of Christ as Jesus has blessed it for you to eat in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus, for the blood of Jesus. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. God be praised. And so, now that you've t eat, taken communion, you've partaken, you've eaten the body of Christ, you've drank the blood of Jesus, the cup of blessing, see whatever sickness and disease is trying to overwhelm you or overtake your body, lay your hands on your body, rebuke it out of your body or your mind, your head, your brain, and, 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 and receive the life of Christ, receive the health of Christ, receive the love of Christ, and walk in his health. And remember, as Jesus is without sickness and disease in this world, so are we. As Jesus, so are you. As Jesus is seated in heavenly places, you are seated in him. And therefore, sickness and disease cannot be in the presence of God. God is a God of life, living, and love. In Jesus' name, have a blessed and a wonderful day, everyone. Love you guys. Blessings. <laughs>